For a long time, the 32-bit integer limit of 2,147,483,647 was the farthest anyone was able to venture. That was until mid-March 2021. A screenshot was posted to the Minecraft wiki showing the Stripe land, a mostly Bedrock Edition exclusive phenomenon in Java Edition. At first, I thought they had just changed Java Edition to use floats to take that screenshot, but the terrain in that screenshot was clearly the farther lands combined with another phenomenon that I will show later. This suggested that someone had managed to get terrain to render 2 to the 53 blocks out, far beyond 2 to the 31. And sure enough, on April 1st, Antvenom posted a video on the new mod. The mod allowed us to view the Farlands as they would generate in vanilla 1.3.5, yes, with the Farlands patch. Way back when way back when the versions with this world generation were actually current, I used to believe that the Farlands were still out there somewhere, and this mod confirmed that. The, the Farlands were now at 53 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 378 billion, 859 million, 512 blocks out. This distance is roughly 5.7 light years in real units, comparable to the distance from Earth to Alpha Centauri. The Farlands appeared similar to their pre beta 1.8 counterparts, except that they would become increasingly repetitive toward the corners. And another thing. As, as we travel further into the Farlands, repeating patterns begin to emerge in the terrain. These are caused by the selector noise coordinates losing precision, and then they are calculated every chunk border, and then they are reduced to a more to a normal range value between 0 and 2 to the 24th by the modulo. So the precision loss basically only manifests at chunk borders. In the corners, when traveling on both axes, these repeating patterns may appear in, or in a grid in grid-like patterns, and if, and even biofilm noise is affected, as you can see here. And finally, the farther lands would, with the modulo patch would appear at 4 quintillion, 312 quadrillion, 4 and 30 trillion, 308 billion, 754 million, 600 thousand, 200 in this case. The exact distance may vary slightly. This is approximately 456 light years away from spawn. You may be wondering why the modulo farlands don't start at exactly 2 to the 63 over 171.103, or, approx or approximately 53 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 38 billion, 846 million, 979,747. Well, in the negative axes, in the negative directions, they do. But in the positive directions, there is, there is actually an offset equivalent to 2 to the 31 minus 2 to the 24 units of low and high noise. That, that's because the modulo works correctly in the within 53 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 38 billion, 846 million, 947 of zero zero. How, however, after that, the noise coordinate once again starts accumulating like it did without the modulo, and and eventually it will once again reach two to the thirty one, and the far lands will appear. Let me see. Of course. Now, n note that the outcome of the modulo after the 64-bit integer starts overflowing is always 2 to the 24th minus 1. So, this the, so the noise coordinate will roughly start from 2 to the 24 after it starts accumulating. So it takes, of course, 2 to the 31 minus 2 to the 24 units to reach, it, to reach, to, to reach the over, to start overflowing. Now, also note that the low and high noise coordinates on the other axis is still re is still reduced to a normal range value by the mo by the modulo. It is also calculated every chunk border, but the modulo reduces it to a more normal value. This is why instead of becoming like the corner farlands toward the corners here, the edge farlands just become repetitive. There is another variation of the farlands that is just from purely 64-bit noise that where the edge farlands become the stack at one-eighth of the way toward the corner farlands. And now here is the variation of the farlands caused by pure 64-bit noise overflowing, as opposed to the modulo farlands from before. 
So these will appear at exactly 2 to the 63 over 171.103. And, and unlike the modulo far length, the structural will actually gradually change as they become more repetitive. And in fact, at 2 to the 60th over 171.103 on the other axis, we can actually see the loop turn into the stack. And the reason for this is because after 2 to the 60th, doubles can only represent multiples of 256. And the pattern of the of the of where the tunnels and solid land are generated in the edge far land is actually that a given d coordinate divisible by four is actually is actually determined by the integer noise coordinate by the integer lower high noise coordinate at, at their modulo 256 because the noise repeats every 256 units. Now, it was here that the 64-bit far lines will actually begin at 53 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 378 billion, 846 million, 979,749. The first multiple of 4 plus 1 after 2 to the 63 over 171.103. Over when, when teleporting to the corner far lines, we can see the two edge stacks intersecting, and we can see the corner far lines in between. Notice that, this, note that the 64-bit corner far lines are much blockier than even the modulo corner far lands. And that is actually because of the noise coordinates losing precision by this point. For the same for the same reason we can also see the terrain before the 64 bit far lands breaking down a little bit. Additionally, when between two and a half and five times the 64 bit far lands distance it is also possible to find repeating patterns similar to the modulo far lands. These will stop at five times the 64-bit far lands distance, which is when selector noise reaches 2 to the 59th units of its highest octave. Also note that the farther lands in this and then the 64-bit far lands will be much harder to notice because of the noise coordinates already losing a lot of precision by that point. However, the 1.2.5 mod was just a gigantic version of everything we had already seen. There was another mod a little while later that I found more exciting. In September of 2021, the creator of the 1.2.5 mod, Pyrif, made a follow-up mod for Beta 1.202, in which the far lands were left at the usual position. This was what really felt like going further into space than before. However, aside from the negative 2,008,431,900 effect I showed earlier occurring again at negative 4,016,263,800, when a third octave has its farther lands. The only major phenomenon we see in this mod, well, one of the only two major new major phenomena we see in this mod is this. At 34,359,738,368, give or take, the Perlin noise generator dictating the depth of the soil in a given area would have its own far land, creating, these, creating stripes alternating between dirt all the way down the bedrock and stone basins. Near the, at the beginning, you can see these mathematical curves in the soil, which correspond to the noise values growing larger as the fraction increases beyond one. Can, up here, you can really see how the basins become stripes at this point. Note that in, in deserts, this can cause a lot of sand to generate floating, which could easily crash the game. And of course, here's the corner biome fill noise far land, which will, which will in most cases be either all dirt or all stone. However, we can sometimes find a diagonal line between dirt and stone. Also note that the edge biome fill noise far lands have these weird holes around their initiation that go all the way down the sea level.
we can also now see the stripe lands combining with the farver lands. There was another phenomenon that I noticed in the beta 1.202 long limit mod. After about a few trillion blocks out, the usual biomes would give way to a strange grassland. And in fact, the exact start of it is around 4.761 trillion blocks out on one axis. You can clearly tell here that since the beta versions usually had smooth grass colors, there's, the fact that there's an abrupt boundary here is how you can tell that this is where the biome breakdown occurs. Exactly. Now you guys may be familiar with Perlin noise, but there is, but there is actually another type of noise algorithm that Minecraft has used, known as simplex noise. Simplex noise is similar to Perlin noise, but instead of interpolating between the four corners of a square, it interpolates between the three vertices of a triangle. Versions prior to beta 1.8 used simplex noise for biomes. And after simplex noise overflows, instead of becoming stripes or layers or flat or anything, what we get is just always the middle value. That is, the, the noise generator will always give it the zero after it overflows. Now, now you may, in, in the case of biomes in this version, that results in only forest biomes after the, la after the breakdown, after the simplex noise breakdown. Now, forest, where are the trees? Well, that's actually another Perlin noise generator overflow that occurs at 2 to the 32, but I can't show that because the game freezes when trying to teleport to it exactly. Unlike with Perlin noise, the coordinates where simplex noise begins overflowing vary. For instance, if we teleport near the edge and corner Farverlands boundary, you can see that the biome breakdown now occurs about 1.04 billion blocks earlier. In fact, this suggests that it may have something to do with the sum of the two coordinates. In fact, the beta versions use two simplex noise functions for biomes, one for humidity, which breaks down at about 1.004 trillion blocks on one axis. In fact, the exact expected distance is 1 trillion, 4 billion, 2 and 7 million, 4 and 25,000, or, or roughly 270 times the square root of 3 times 2 to the 31. And, and, and one for temperature, which results in the biome breakdown that I, that we just, I just showed you guys. Who's expected over whose expected overflow distance, of course, is at for about 4.761 trillion, uh, trillion on one axis, or more precisely, 2 to the 39th times 5 times the square root of 3. Now, in, now in quadrants of the, now in, now in quadrants where both signs are the same, simplex noise overflows when both the x and z coordinates add up to the distance on one axis. Though in quadrants of signs opposed, there is a spike, which will extend all the way out to square root of three times the distance where it overflows on one axis. Notice how the diagonal line where, where it overflows eventually curves toward a more like three to one sort of line. That's where the exact ratio, let's see. Let's see, what is the exact ratio? There we go. Now we can see how the biomes end in a spike in the northeast quadrant and in the southwest quadrant as well. Note that simplex noise does not always overflow at 2 to 31 units. In fact, it can overflow at less than 2 to the 31 units. And when, when I'm traveling on one axis only, it always over, it will overflow at 2 to the 31 over the square root of 3 units, or roughly 1.239 billion units. And the only place where it reaches all the way out to 2 to the 31 units before overflowing is actually the spikes in the northeast and southwestern quadrants.
important. And this is because the, the, the calculations used on the, on the noise coordinates effectively multiply the, X, the noise coordinates by square root of 3 and add them together. Additionally, in the early trillions range, the snow biomes that do generate have visibly less detailed boundaries. This is because, when, unlike with Perlin noise, which begins breaking down, of course, when its first octave overflows, simplex noise doesn't completely break down until the last octave overflows. However, earlier octaves overflowing will cause the noise map to gradually lose detail as, the, as these octaves are used for, to add detail to the noise map. I also just love the contrast between the corner farver lands, which are very open, and the, ed and the chaotic edge farver lands right next to them on this seed. In later versions, several decorative noise generators were added, which would also use simplex noise. The gradient of, in flower forests, you would use simplex noise, and after it's overflowing at 59.512 billion blocks out on one axis, or roughly 2 to the 35 times the square root of 3 on one axis, only red tulips would generate in flower forests. Badlands biomes would also use a simplex noise generator for determining the offset of clay bands, and after it's overflowing, the clay bands simply become unchanging, which is actually pretty hard to tell from a usual Badlands biome. And in fact, and in fact, this noise gener generator seems to be only defined on the x-axis, ignore completely ignoring the z-axis. So it's be so it would only break down on the x-axis, and would never break down on the z-axis, of course. Certain aspects of eroded badlands generation also use simplex noise. So I haven't been able to find any, any manifestations of that overflowing. However, if the badlands terracotta band offset noise used Perlin noise instead, its overflowing would give way to some interesting patterns, sometimes resembling static, uh, our sometimes resembling static, our times resembling roads, with these and, and occasionally we may see these diagonal patterns. The lines may be perfectly straight or may go in, or may curve a little bit, like as we see here. These are a visual representation of the noise of the output of the noise growing very large once it over once the noise coordinates begin to overflow. Once the integer noise coordinate overflows. And if the biomes in the beta versions use Perlin noise instead, then at 42,949,672,960 approximately, we would find the humidity farlands, which look pretty looks like this, with, with stripes alternating between, in this case, forest and desert or savanna. Here we can actually see that, that the diagonal line starts out as more of a mathematical curve in the corner variation. It sort of starts out like this and then curves and eventually becomes a straight diagonal line. Because he, here, with the noise scale being much lower, you can really see what would happen when the fraction values are very small but still greater than 1. And of course, at twice that distance when temperature noise would overflow. Oh, if it was using Perlin noise, then all biomes would become tundra, or in this case, ice desert, because I added it in this mod. Yeah. <laughs>